Hello everyone and welcome to another Pathfinder adventure card game scenario with the character Damiel. We're over at the Momia Lab and this is adventure or scenario 5.2, the second scenario of level 5. At the Momia Lab at this location, at the start of your turn, succeed at a constitution 4 check or suffer the scourge curse of withering. Alright, let's get started. Advancing the Blessings deck, it's a Blessing of Phrasma. The first thing we'll need to do is roll for the uh, Curse of Withering. Uh, we have a Constitution of D8. Alright, so Daniel rolls a 6. So we don't have to suffer the Curse of Withering. Exploring, we get a Shock Lizard. So I think Daniel, yeah, he started the whole campaign with uh, this ally. And now it's back. So Wisdom Survival 4. Daniel has a Wisdom of D6. And we rolled a 4. Alright, so a little reunion of sorts. We'll go ahead and use the Shock Lizard to discard this card to explore your location. And we may add the Electricity Trait to our checks. Alright, so let's go ahead and explore. And we get the Potion of Energy Resistance. Uh, it's a liquid alchemical. Uh, banish this card to reduce acid, cold, electricity, or fire damage dealt to a character at your location by 4. It's an Intelligence Craft 4 check. And Damiel has an intelli uh, or a craft of D10 plus 5, so this is an auto-acquire. Uh, it is a basic level uh, item, so we can't use this to trade to a trader. Uh, we'll take it, and we will discard it. Alright, so we also have... You know, we have the Viper in, it, in our hand, and we really haven't been using him. So let's go ahead and use him for his discard this card to explore your location power. We'll do that. Let's go ahead and do another exploration. Okay, that way we don't have to deal with the Mumia lab effect. But as it is, we found a living sandstorm. So we did not examine this card. So he's immune to mental, poison, and ranged traits. Wow. And it says here, before you act, discard a card from the Blessings deck, then shuffle the villain, then shuffle the villain sandstorm from the box into the Blessings deck. Well, <clears throat> let's see. He's immune to the mental, poison, and ranged traits. Wow, how about that? Both of Daniel's weapons are ranged. We don't want to deal with this before you act effect, so we have a shock room in our hand. We'll just go ahead and we'll discard it so we can ignore his powers. And then we still have to deal with him. Uh, the only thing we got going for us is an acid flask. So we're going to use the acid flask to roll uh, 2d6 plus a d10. Assembly my dice here, and then since Daniel is a mad scientist, we can use his power. We can recharge the alchemist's shield and add a total of 2d4 to our check. So I think we'll, we'll I think we will be in good shape. The uh, uh, craft skill or the disabled check for the um, the disabled check for the uh, acid flask is a plus four modifier. So adding four to this roll. So we roll 12 and three is 15 and four, 19 and three, 22 plus another four, 26. Yes, the living sandstorm has been banished. All right, we use a lot of cards for that. We have to reset Damiel's hand. So resetting Damiel's hand. Uh, now we will go ahead and roll for the Mumia Lab. Roll a d8. Alright, so we rolled a 2. So unfortunately, we do suffer the curse of withering. So that is unfortunate. We'll put that off to the side. Before Daniel explores this turn, we have a canteen. We will go ahead and display that card. Uh, then, what else do we have here? So, shucks. That curse of withering really sucks. We don't have anything to get rid of it right now. So we will just go ahead and, and explore. And what did you know? We get uh, the villain. Villain and we're suffering a curse of withering. So this villain is immune to the electricity trait. Before you act, if another character is at your location. Well, there's not. So let's see. It's a combat 24. We have the curse of withering, which states he doesn't. So he's only immune to the electricity trait. So fortunately for us, we can use the noxious bomb. 
we're going to go ahead and use our dexterity or range skill. So the range skill normally is a d10, but due to cursed withering, it's going to be a d8 plus 2d6. We're also going to additionally discard a card to add our craft skill. Usually our craft skill is d10, but it's going to be a d8. Uh, we're going to try to do a craft a 9 check right now to recharge the card that we're discarding. Uh, we're going to choose to discard the fire lance. Uh, so we have to do with our craft check, which is normally a d10, but it's going to be a d8. So we're adding d8 plus 5 to this roll. So at least we do, we are able to recharge the uh, fire lance instead of discard it. So then, these are the dice that we have, thanks to the noxious bomb, which goes on top of the canteen. And then, since Daniel is a mad scientist, we're going to recharge the scare buckler. So that we can add, let's see, let me double check his mad scientist power. Yeah, we're going to recharge that to add a 2d4 to our combat check. So, we're going to do all this stuff, and we're going to see what happens. We are adding a total, since it's our range skill, we're adding a total of plus 5 for the ranged, and we're adding another plus 5 for the craft. So we're adding 10 to this check. So, feeling pretty good about that. So we roll the one, and another one, and another one. And we roll the four, and a six. And we roll the three. So, adding ten to this roll, so six, so ten, twenty-three, twenty-four to five, twenty-six. Twenty-six, and we needed a twenty-four. So, wow, that was really fortunate that we had that plus ten modifier. So once again, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, 18, 19, 20, 26. We only needed a 24. And it says here, if the result of the check to defeat is less than 35, check off the traitor trove, check off the traitor trove of Tef Naju on the bizarre card. Well, pretty exciting. Check it out. He is defeated. We get to draw the noxious bomb and toss the canteen. Reset in our hand here, and we can. So we have six cards, and the location is closed. Boom. Not only is the location closed, but of course we get, we have unlocked this trader, the Trove of Tejnahu. So let's go ahead and see what the reward for this scenario was. Wow, that was exciting. So let's go ahead. Uh, the reward for this scenario is this guy. He is a level five uh, creature. Or ally, I should say. He is a creature, but he's also he is also an ally. And let's go ahead, and we're going to do a deck check here. This uh, I don't know if we're going to ever go to this uh, trader. It says do to do. So it costs us four boons, man. Four boons to get a really good treasure. So obviously we're not going to go for that. So let's go ahead and do an abbreviated deck check here for uh, Daniel. He has this level 5 loot item. Looking for items that are of level 4 or 5. Uh, last scenario, we actually decided to keep the pure holy water. We were thinking of the uh, sandstorm dust, but we have these two cool items of, which are level 5. And then, let's see what else. Do we have any other things of level 4 or 5? So unfortunately, this is all we have to trade to a trader. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of set us up for the next campaign. Is we're going to keep this ally, even though we're not really that fond of him. And for our deck check, uh, we are actually going to say so long to our pal the Viper, because he's only level 3. So we'll toss the Viper, we can keep this guy. We'll have to toss a few other items that we just acquired, like that, um, where is it? This uh, potion of energy resistance. We don't need that, so we're going to get rid of it. We're going to get rid of the shock lizard too. Say goodbye to our reptile friend. So this is the state of uh, Daniel's deck. The exciting thing is, is that for next adventure, he will have these two items to trade to a trader, possibly, if he so wants to. This and that. And was, uh, was there something else here? What was the other level 4 or 5 item he had? Possibly to trade. 
Wow, how about that? So he actually doesn't really, he doesn't have anything to trade to a trader. That's level four or five. So at least he has something for, I mean, he could go to a trader right now. And, hmm, I mean, should we go to a trader? I guess, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it really quick. We're going to go to False Seam Deke. We got these two items. We might as well see what he's offering. Shuffling the item deck. Maybe he's going to give us an even better item. So, let's go ahead and see what False Seam Deke is offering. Level 4. So he's offering a necklace of fireballs. He keeps trying to trade that to us. And we keep telling him no. Oh, check it out. It wore the Sunrod. So I've really been interested in the Sunrod. Uh, and I'm really glad we came across it. So, for your combat check, reveal this card and recharge an item that has the alchemical trait to use your melee or craft skill plus 3d6. If the Bane has a poison or undead trait, add another d6. So here for our craft skill is d10 plus 5 plus 3d6 plus a potential 4d6. So I think that would be better than the holy water grenade. I mean, they're, they're both items. Um, so I think that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to give him these two tr uh, cards, and we're going to keep the Sunrod. We obviously don't want the Necklace of Fireballs. Well, cool, I actually really wanted that card for Daniel's deck, and now we got it. So I'm glad we went to the trader. So that is settled. I'll have to uh, arrange Daniel's deck. We have to lose one card that has the Alchemical Trait in order to keep this into our deck. But uh, there you have it. That's the state of uh, Daniel's deck. I'll do a more in-depth uh, deck check at the start of the next adventure. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll have another adventure up shortly.